the leader in talk radio on the Internet, right here on K98talk.com. If you want to work until you keel over, have less of everything in retirement, or give back more of your hard-earned money to the stock market again, then just ignore me. But if you'd like to protect the money you save, receive a steady, predictable retirement income, and enjoy financial security for as long as you live, then listen to this. You can download a free report that reveals the wealth-building secrets Wall Street and the banks don't want you to know. You'll learn how you can get guaranteed growth, safety, and real prosperity without risking your money in the Wall Street casino and how to get the money you need when you need it simply by asking for it. This is the best way to have a 100% secure retirement and know your money will last as long as you do. To learn more about this method and to get your free report, go to 29security.com. That's the number 29security.com. 29security.com. Go to 29security.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. All right, folks, this is Rick Robinson with you. I want to tell you about some friends of mine from a company called Security Enforcement Specialists. When I ran my security agency for 12 years, I worked with one of these partners on a daily basis. He's been involved in this agency now, and with his other partner, they do have over 30 years of experience in the private security industry. If you own a business and you need someone to keep you or your customers or residents safe, then I highly recommend contacting Security Enforcement Specialists today. Give them a call at 405-703-1796. Again, that's 405-703-1796. Again, tell them Rick from K98 Talk sent you. Like I said, if you need the help, they are here for you. So make sure that you uh, go look them up, check them out, and see what they can do. Wrong way. Welcome to the Joe had huge problems with the IRS. I knew it was coming. I hadn't filed taxes since 1990. All the IRS letters coming in added up to a nightmare. It got up to like $68,000. My heart started beating fast. It's like, there's no way, man. I mean, I ain't going to be able to do this. Then they stopped his paycheck. So that's when I started making phone calls and found U.S. Tax Shield. U.S. Tax Shield went to work immediately. They just took the bull by the horns. What blew my mind is he called the IRS right then and there. So why is U.S. Tax Tax Shield A plus rated with the Better Business Bureau? Joe knows. They saved me a ridiculous amount of money. If you owe more than ten thousand dollars to the IRS or state, choose the company Joe chose. U.S. Tax Shield. It was the best decision I made. U.S. Tax Shield is the way to go. Life is good. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Call eight hundred four seven one thirty two eighty seven. U.S. Tax Shield. 
You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, Internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. The leader in talk radio on the Internet, right here on K98talk.com. My name is Jessie. I'm a United States Special Forces widow. This gives me a unique perspective on the world around us. If you're willing to listen, I'll tell you how I see it, and I won't pull any punches. This is my POV, which stands for Point of View. All right, this is Jessie. I'm happy to be back with you, obviously. I've always got a lot of interesting topics. This is a fun one. I have a friend. His name's Josh Baldwin. I've invited him on to tell about how he came to realize that he was gay. He's openly gay. And the decision he made to be public about his sexual orientation and his journey along that path. I'm going to let Josh, as I do everybody, introduce himself. So, Josh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hello. Well, thank you very much for having me on the show today. So, I'm really excited about it. Um, You're so welcome. I'm, I'm Josh Baldwin, and I mostly became a bit known on the internet from writing, but lately I've gone into blogging and YouTube, and I still write. Um, but, yeah, I am openly gay online, and that's changed things a lot for me because I would say half my audience if not if not more are now gay males um which has changed things quite a lot for me really what was your audience before you came out and when did you come out how did you make that decision that's a huge decision it was a huge decision um I'm 19 and I only came out last year which I understand a lot of people do come out later in life but for me, I felt as though that was quite late because obviously all of my friends had been in relationships, all of my friends had had boyfriends and girlfriends, and for me, I just never portrayed or conveyed an interest in anybody. Um, but yeah, I came out last May to my family, and by July, I was out online to everybody. So I felt as though that was quite quick. That is quick. You made the decision in May to start with, I'm guessing, close friends and family, and then in July, you essentially told the world yeah essentially um and i still to this day say it's the best decision i made but um i took a long time to realize i was gay i always thought i was um but not specifically gay i just always thought there was something a bit different i'd never quite fit in at school i i enjoyed school from an academic point of view but never really on a social side until i was older in school, I always felt as though I really, really disliked PE. I really disliked sports because I felt as though I wasn't the typical boy. I wasn't very good at sports. And I feel feel as though I didn't enjoy it because I wouldn't fit in with all the other lads who'd enjoy all this rough and tumble and all this different slang and lingo, which I just wouldn't enjoy. Um, so in school, I always kept myself to myself in that sense. And my friend group were males until I got older and then when they started to be when they started to get girlfriends I found myself beginning to get on with their girlfriends better than I did them and I remember wanting to spend more time with their girlfriends than I did with my male friends and that's when I began to think oh maybe something's a little bit different here okay now you haven't mentioned where you're from is that something you're willing to share um yeah so i most of my childhood has been spent on the east coast of england in quite a small town it's not very big um so that's where i predominantly grew up yeah so you're in england or the uk yeah All right just in case people had picked up the accent, I figured yeah. might as well at least say UK here. Yeah, I'm in England, yeah. So how did you tell, essentially tell the world? Did you tweet about it? Did you blog about it? Did you do a video? And um, how did you come to the realization that this was something you had to share with the world or wanted to share the, with, with the world? Well, when I first, I was, this is something I've never really spoken about because I kept it very, very private at the time. But last 
May, I started talking to a boy on the internet. Um, he wasn't just a random boy. He was actually going to the same university as me because this is when I was in college and I realised in school I questioned whether I might be gay, but in college I started to accept it, but I didn't want to... No, I started to realise it, but I didn't want to accept it, if that makes sense. So it got towards the end of college and literally in the last month. So I left college on a Friday and I remember on the Thursday I said to myself, right, I leave college tomorrow and then I'm going to be on in, in my summer break and then I'm going to be starting university by myself, six hours away from home in somewhere I've never been before. So I said I'd love to have just one friend. If I know just one person, if I go to this university, at least I know somebody. So on the Thursday night, I messaged um, a boy. I, he was on Facebook in the Facebook group um, for our university. I go to the University of Brighton. And when I, I sent him a message saying, hey, I hope you don't mind this, but I'm going to the same university as you, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then we just got talking and it flowed really, really well. The next day on the Friday was my last day of college. And he coincidentally was finishing college on the same day. So we were both messaging each other there as we was getting ready to go on a night out of celebrating finishing college and he said to me because all of his friends were girls and all of my friends were girls he sent me a message saying all my friends are taking ages to get ready um and then just as a joke he said it's a gay guy problem and I hadn't told him that I was gay and I didn't know that he was gay he hadn't confirmed it to me so I had this moment where I could either tell him no that I'm definitely not gay or I could just tell him so I simply just said to him yeah I understand you I know what you mean and he was like oh so I take it that you're gay then and I was like yeah I am but you're the first person I've ever told how did that feel to finally tell somebody it felt really really nice it felt like Obviously, like, I'd never even met him, but even the idea that just one person now knew made it a bit easier. And because he was, I could, I could have came out to one of my best friends or, you know, someone else close to me, but to come out to somebody who you didn't have the pressure of really knowing, but also had been in exactly the same boat as you made it a whole lot easier. And on that, on the next night, I then told my best friend, and that was a Saturday. So on the Monday night, I sat down with my parents because I was messaging this boy, and he said, just tell your parents, they'll understand, um, mine did, and it all went fine. And he really, like, guided me through it. So I sat down on a, it's quite a funny story, actually. I sat down on a Monday night, and my, um, I lived with my mother and my stepfather at the time. So I sat down with them both and he works away about a month at a time. So we just got back home and obviously him and my mother like spending time together. But I sat myself literally in the middle of them all night long on Monday and I said, tonight I'm going to tell them that I'm gay. It didn't happen. Bedtime came around. So I sat down on the Tuesday night to try again and it didn't happen. So I tried again on the Wednesday and this basically carried on all the way up until the Friday night so a whole week I sat in the middle of them both um and I sat down and they got up to go to bed and I'd literally left it last minute again and I was like I can't leave it for another night this is getting silly now and normally I never like I, I get on really well with them but normally I don't sit with them every single night so just as my mum was about to switch the lights out I said mum I need to talk to you about something and she was like oh one minute then so she went around the house like closing the curtains and things and at that point I knew there was no turning back because I said I want to talk to you about something um and I basically sat with them both and my sentence at first was I think I might be gay and my stepdad was like you think or you know and I was like yeah I know I'm, I'm gay and my stepdad was elated about it he stood up he gave me a massive hug he said he was really really proud and my mum was just like my mum was amazing about it she was tearful but mostly she just wanted me to be okay and since then she's become really educated about gay people she openly tells her friends um at a workplace that she has a gay son and um she's really really supportive of it and that's amazing so I told my mum and my stepdad and at this point my mum and my stepdad knew and also this boy I'd been speaking to online and my best friend so I then messaged my my best friends I have like with four of them we're on a little group chat and I simply sent them a message telling them that I'd just come out to my parents and they're reaction was amazing they sent me like photos of them like sat in tears and they were all just really really happy about it so you didn't have any problems with any of your close friends 
or your family? No, my mum and stepdad was amazing about it. My stepdad said that he had often mentioned it to my mum a couple of times, like in the recent times before I did. And my, my best friend said that they had all known for years anyway, which is really interesting. But they all said that they'd known for years. And they used to just, um, they used to kind of broach the subject with me, but I used to try to avoid it. But they was amazing. The next person I had to tell was my brother, um, which was a really nice moment, actually. I think with my brother, it brought us closer. My brother is young than me at the time he was I think he was 15 or 16 yeah he was just turned 16 um and I sat down with him and I wasn't going to tell him just yet he was doing his he was doing his exams if I remember correctly and not that I thought it was something that would distract him but I remember him being very focused on revising every night and I didn't want to take an evening away out of his time essentially and he was talking to me and he kind of just we got onto the subject of um boyfriends and girlfriends and I kind of just told him it happened really naturally without me knowing it was going to happen and that for me was even better because it just felt so nice just the pair of us which was to happen completely naturally and he was really chilled about it he just said oh I thought so anyway I've got revision to do and this is on the telly so can I just chat to you later and it, that was really really amazing um, so your family accepted you for who you were how did you feel that various friends of yours had basically known or suspected this for years, but you weren't willing to admit it to yourself. Did anybody else ever try and bring it up in conversation? Or how did, how did it go when people's like basically said, yeah, I've kind of known that you were gay? How did you feel about that? Someone knowing this secret you were trying to keep? Um, well, quite interestingly, I, everybody, I kind of knew that everybody else knew. It was a, it was a strange situation because I literally, I went to the same college as I did school. And, you know, we're with these people from when we're about the age of four. So we literally grew up with them. And at this point, I'm 18. So they've spent 14 years of their life with me. Um, the majority of them. So when I got to college and I feel because you're a lot more mature at college, a lot of people had already known. So when I told my friends and obviously then there was a lot more open with me about the conversations that they used to have with other people and people used to constantly ask them um has just come out yet which i found really really funny to be honest i wasn't upset that people used to presume i wasn't i wasn't bothered about it because for me it was just well it's really obvious then that this is the person that i am and to me it just proved that everyone was all right with it and the only thing i thought was if all these people knew and all these people's waiting i just wish i'd come out sooner i wish i'd done it sooner okay at what age did were you totally sure? How old were you again? I think we've already covered this, but do you remember how old you were? Well, I came out at 18, but it was to, I was probably only about 17 when I was sure. I probably thought it for a long time, but it was probably around 17 when I was sure. And I remember, and it sounds, sounds quite cliche, but I remember I was stood just in the bathroom and I was just looked in the mirror and I just said the words, I'm gay. And the words sounded really like foreign. I'd never said those words aloud to myself. And it, I know it sounds a bit cliche and overdramatic, but that is literally how it happened. And the more I just kept saying it, the more I accepted it and the more I realized it actually feels really natural to say that that's cool mm. and I'm glad that you were able to accept yourself for who you are and so were your friends and family so then what made you decide to share this with you said you'd been into writing and things like that what made you decide to share this with the people who followed you online and people that knew you from your writing and essentially the world. Yeah, um, I started out online, I think I started out online quite young. Started, um, blogging around the age of 14 or 15 and instantly I started talking to people who were quite a lot older than me. I never really spoke to other 14 or 15 year olds online. Um, but I essentially made that decision because I came out to my parents, I came out to my friends, I came out to my brother, and the next people to tell were my grandparents. Um, my grandparents are not particularly old, they're quite young to, for grandparents, they're only in their 50s, um, but I was quite nervous about telling them, but not because they never like pressed any views onto me, they were always quite accepting in everything else, but I remember coming to university and they they were the ones who brought me to my university to have a look around. And I remember my um, nana saying to me, this is where you'll find your Kate Middleton, referencing to the royal family. This is where you'll find your Princess Kate. And I remember sat there thinking, no, this is where I'll find um, 
my Prince William, not my Princess Kate, but obviously I didn't say anything at the time. But I, um, it was on the night of my brother's prom and it was, I had just wanted to wait for an opportunity where it would just be me, my nana and my granddad, but usually it's never just us three. And this night came up where my brother was going to his prom and um, they asked to take me out for a meal. So I thought this is a perfect opportunity. And when they dropped me off back home, I stood them in the kitchen and I just said, look, I've got something to tell you, um, but I'm gay. And I was a bit disappointed, actually. <laughs> I thought it was very anticlimactic. I'd spent weeks um, worrying that they would react badly. My granddad was just like, well, if that's who you are, that's who you are. And then I went, oh, that's nice. Would you like to come round for dinner on Sunday? And it was as casual as that. Um, and then the next person I told was my great nana, who was just amazing. She's in her 80s, but she was just, as long as I'm all right, she's okay. She's an amazing lady. I have a lot, a lot of respect for her. And by that point, my, everyone who needed to know knew. So I had not had one blip. Not one person had been upset about it. Everyone who I'd gone to college with knew about it. But it was really strange because online, I always feel as though I'm really quite open online. Like I say, I've been online blogging, blogging since about the age of 14. So I'd shared when I was at school, I had shared um, going to college, I shared my exams, I shared my first job, I shared my holidays, every aspect of my life I put on the internet pretty much. And it felt really, and I remember in, because it was in the summer when gay marriage was made legal in in America. And by this point, I wasn't out. And to me, obviously, on a personal level, it was amazing that this was now a possibility, that it didn't matter anymore, that gay people in the US could get married. And I talked to a lot, a lot of people from the US. And it was just really strange, because I remember like being out to everyone in my life, but keeping this bit from the internet, and trying to convey how happy I was, online trying to convey how happy I was online without telling anybody the real reason just felt really strange and my friends had said for a long time you you know you do these videos you do this blog why not make a coming out video and I'd said for a long time even though I had watched a lot of coming out videos I said I'm not going to make one I'm not going to add to the, add to them there's loads of them and I just don't feel I'm like good enough to make one of them really um so one afternoon, I just got my phone and I sat on my sofa and I just thought, no, I just want to tell them. I just need to tell them. And it was a really casual video. I didn't do much editing. I didn't do a script. I just filmed it straight away. And it was about 13 minutes long. It's quite lengthy, but it just felt really natural. And as soon as I post that video, my social media blew up like I've never seen it blow up before and every single person was amazing about it and all these authors whose books are read in the UK, authors who are read in the US, um, bloggers, bloggers, so many people who I looked up to and spoke to, every single one was amazing about it and to me then it, it was all just done and I don't think I've ever done anything as amazing as that since then to be honest. So did you feel like a weight was lifted off your shoulders, like now you were finally being honest with yourself and the world? A massive weight. I was writing a book at the time with um, a gay protagonist because that, to me, I started writing that book in the in 2014, so a whole year before I came out, and that was like my way of exploring um, what it is to be gay. So kind of just exploring the idea with myself, um, but obviously I never spoke to anybody because if you're pretending to be straight, like it doesn't matter if you're straight and writing about gay characters, that's fine. But if you're somebody who's trying to keep the fact that you're not straight secret, you're not going to tell people you write in a novel with a gay protagonist because you want to deflect as much attention as way from that as you can. So, so I wait like a minute, if you're writing a novel about a gay protagonist and you're at the moment trying to keep it secret, could you even publish that novel? No. I never told anybody I was writing the book. I never um, planned on getting it published. I never, to me, it was just simply for me. And and I kind of just sat there one day and I realised over time, I was like, I if I'm going to keep this to myself, I can't express, um, I can't, can't be truthful online where I connect with other people's writings or videos. 
I can't be honest about why I'm happy about um, gay marriage in the US. I can't be honest about the things I'm writing. If I go on a date with a boy or I meet somebody, I'm going to have to keep my whole relationship secret. And I was just to the point where I was trying to keep so much secret and so much to myself, it just didn't make sense anymore. It was becoming too difficult to keep all that to myself. It was easier just to be honest. I think it's great that you decided to share your the fact that you're gay with everyone. Did your coming out videos spark a number of people co- who hadn't been previously following you, contacting you, reaching out to you? Were any of them, I don't need details, but were any of them still in the closet and they looked to you for guidance or inspiration or whatever? A lot more people than I thought. I thought when I made a coming out video, it was more just to tell the people who already followed me, this is a new bit about me, this is some new information. But the amount of people who emailed me after or DM'd me on Twitter saying that that video really made them think or really made a difference was actually quite astounding. I didn't think it would do that. And I think that's why not only is it a video that I'm very proud of on myself, but also I'm proud of what it's done for other people. I'm not I'm not like tooting my own at horn there, but I, I'm just glad that I made that decision to make that video. And I think it's something like my second most watched video on my channel. And even to this day now, it's not even been a year yet, and I still get emails every month, and it's helped somebody, which I think is fantastic. Well, that's great. So you were able to use your own situation to reach out to others without even really trying to do it. And that yeah. that's in and of itself amazing. And I would like your permission to post a link to your video when I post the podcast. Yeah, definitely. So I have no shame with that video. That's my favourite video. I could vlog any amazing day. And that simple video of just sitting down and talking about just something new about me is still my favourite video. All right. So you're a year on from essential, give or take a little bit. You're about a year out from when you first said, I'm gay. Yeah. How has your life changed? What's what new experiences have you had? What has changed in your life? I have watched a few of your videos and I see that you do occasionally do things on skincare products and yeah. bath soaps and things like that. And I kind of go, I'm not even into that stuff and I'm female. I think <laughs> yeah. he has more skincare products than I do. <laughs> um, I think it's it's changed a lot for me. I feel like content wise online, I feel like I can do more now. Obviously, if you're if you're straight, you can talk about skincare, but I do feel as though, um, for me, it's something that I shied away from before because I was just scared about what people would say. But now, you know, I'll sit there and I'll talk about what's in my Hugo Boss bag, or this is something I've tried on my hair, this is something I've done with my skin, and I feel a lot more comfortable just doing that. Um, I'm also online, my... Uh, the people who I surround myself with. I would say the majority of people I now speak to are, are gay. Um, just because I've got in touch with other content creators because I just, I used to watch them when I was thinking about how I could approach doing this because I needed not to learn from somebody, but just to see how it works. And so when they found out about me, then we started talking. And I've made so many more friends because there's, so many other people who were in the same situation and I would, there's like a little community of us on Twitter and um, we're gay teen males and it's not like an exclusive group but it's somewhere where we can all talk about how we're feeling and we all cheer each other on and it's it's just changed a lot of things. I feel like I can be myself more in my content, I've made a lot of new friends and it also has meant on a personal level that as soon as I came out as gay then um, and everyone was alright with it then I could start thinking about relationships and I could start thinking about meeting somebody because I had gone years and years just watching everybody else do that kind of stuff and I'd just been on the sidelines. All right, so basically telling the world opened up a whole new world of things for you and it allowed you to actually be who you really were without having to try and go, oh, I can't do this because they don't know and I don't want them to know now 
you went, you mentioned uh, gay marriage being legal in the U.S. What's the status of gay marriage in England? Um, they can get together. It's a civil partnership, so it's slightly different, but it is acceptable. Um, it's not something that's as suppressed as it is in America or was in America, I should say. Um, and it's something that we're quite open about, I'd say. You know, we can, it's very clear that two gay men can adopt a child and it's something that you do see. I do feel as though in the UK, I feel we're quite good at it. I think there's still progress to be made, but I do feel we're quite good at it. Now, I didn't really mention this to you in show prep or anything, but with all the Muslim extremists that have moved to Europe because of all the conflict going on in the Middle East, do you ever worry that maybe they won't find it's not accepted by them and maybe there'll start to be problems? Um, I, I don't really. It's not something I think about very often. Maybe that's just me being a little bit sheltered because I must admit, I do think lately I, I am a bit sheltered because I live um, very close to Brighton, which is the gay capital of the UK. So it's everything. Everybody's very open, very acceptable here. I haven't had one homophobic comment said to me since I moved down here and I've been out and about holding hands with other guys and seen with males on nights out, etc., and also just the fact that so many of the people who I text on a day-to-day basis are also gay males. So I think because now I'm so engrossed in it, I'm, I need to sometimes remember to step back and realize not everybody is so lucky. And that is something I will hold my hands up to, if I be honest. Awesome. Was the fact that Brighton is the gay capital of England, did that play a role in where you went to university? It didn't. And this is a funny story because, because I wasn't out at the time when I decided to come here, but I essentially stumbled upon Brighton University almost accidentally. I'd already decided the universities I wanted to apply for. I then did my mock exams and realised that in a certain subject in psychology, I might not perform as well as I might do. Um, so I just had a little bit of a panic and I started thinking, I just need to find another university to apply to that has slightly lower grades. And I found the University of Brighton and I have seen a lot of Brighton because a lot of the YouTubers who I watch, obviously doing YouTube, it's something I'm, do, I'm involved in a lot now, that a lot of them live in Brighton. So I thought they just looked like a really cool place to live. So my nana and my granddad drove me down here to have a look round and it wasn't until we arrived on an evening and we sat just before a meal and I can't remember his exact words but my granddad turned around and was like did, did you know I was like do I know what and obviously I'm not out at this point and he says oh this is the gay capital and we had just a little laugh about it but I do think it was strange how I think sometimes things are meant to be and I think the fact that I accidentally stumbled upon a course that happened to have the grades that perfectly matched what I had with a course that ended up being really enjoyable that I didn't know about in advance and just ended up being in the gay capital and accepting place. I think that was meant to be. I'm a big believer in things like that. So what are you studying? Um, I'm doing English and education. So you want to essentially teach English? Yeah. Um, um- on what level? I want to go into college level, so possibly secondary school, but more college. I'd like to go into a sixth form, essentially, so that's aged um, about seven, about, yeah, what is it, 16 to 18? Yeah, 16 to 18. And I do want to teach, but eventually I want to be in the management of it. So I want to be managing or running a college one day. That's a very ambitious goal. So we've talked a lot about your sexuality and how it's impacted various other things in your life. What else do you have going on in your life? I mean, everybody's got something else going on. Yeah, um, at the minute, I am just very busy doing YouTube. It's something that I've really found myself enjoying lately a lot more. I used to blog a lot more, and now I find I really enjoy making videos. Just because I enjoy sitting and having a chat, I think I'm quite a chatty person anyway. Um So I feel like that's something I'm focusing on. So I do do a new video every three days. Um, At the same time, I am doing my university studies. That takes up a lot of my time. And I've just been just 
focusing on being my age, I guess. I feel as though when I was 15, 16, I was so focused on like having a successful publishing career that I feel like I didn't enjoy being my age as much as I should have done. So now I'm 19 and I'm at university, so I just enjoy being a bit more social <laughs> than I used to be. Do you feel that coming out has allowed you to be more social? Definitely. Um, mm. All my friends know about it. They're all all right with it. Um, I can just really chat about what's on my mind. I can really engage myself in situ in conversations more. Um, and also, I'm not in a relationship right now, but I have been last year, towards the end of last year, um, for a few months. And that's, again, another part of my life that I've never been able to um, be a part of before. How was that being your first serious semi-serious or serious relationship or committed relationship or however you want to phrase it mm. how was that for you it was um i'd say it was it was really fun but it was also a learning curve and it didn't end particularly well but i'm not upset about that i feel as though um because i had never been with anyone when i was younger I, it was like the first time for you know being with someone the first time like holding hands with someone who you truly feel a connection with so and other bits and bobs like that so i felt as though whilst it didn't end very well we do still talk and um, obviously I won't go too much into it, but I felt as though it was a big learning curve and it kind of needed to happen for me to really discover who I am and what I want. Well, that's good that it happened. I'm yeah. sorry it didn't end well, but at least you still talk once in a while. So you haven't slammed the door on each other and said something like, I'll never talk to this person again. No, we haven't done that. We um, it just We both wanted different things and we both at different times of our lives. Um, and we both had just different things going on. I was in university in a new town with new friends in a place I'd never been before. And at the same time, having this relationship, which was all new. And for me, it was just a little bit too many things all brand new happening at the same time. Um, and he was a lot more settled. And I also didn't want to be that settled either. So I think in, in my way, I didn't really know what I wanted at the time. But we both moved on a lot. Um we send each other the odd text now and again, but for the most part, um, I'm really, really happy where I am right now. I'm really happy being me lately. So what do you see in your future? I mean, are you going to go back to writing? Are you ever going to publish that uh, novel you were working on with the gay protagonist? What are your plans? Well, I've got two years left of university. Um, so at the minute, I'd love to carry on growing my YouTube channel. That's something I feel very passionate about. And as for writing, writing is something that I will always do. I used to publish a lot. I used to, um, for those of you who don't know, I used to self-publish my own novels. I did get, I got a book deal when I was quite young and the deal fell through, but I already had an audience online. So I decided that I would self-publish the novel. It did quite well and I carried on and I did that at a really fast pace. I released a lot of novels in a short amount of time. So I just, I've taken a step back and I will return to writing, but if I publish again, it will be through a traditional publisher. And the book that I am working on at the minute, it's in its final draft. I am working on it with a critique with a critique partner and I'm hoping to get it out to agents in June is actually the book with the gay protagonist which makes me really really happy. So you did go back to that novel or is this a new one with the gay protagonist? It's the same one which makes me really happy because that I never thought would see the day of light ever. I thought I'd keep that to myself but that's one that I'm now working on. So your writing and your life seem to co coincide. Yeah. And that's made you happy. How have your writing fans from your novels reacted to the fact that you're gay? Really well. I I have not had um apart from the other, the other last week I got my very first homophobic comment, which to say I I'm on Twitter a lot, I'm on Instagram, I'm on YouTube, I'm doing my blog. I'm like I'm quite out there and I don't keep it um a secret that I'm gay. I think that we have only just had my first homophobic comment online ever. I think that's pretty good going. Um and I just feel more sorry for the people who don't accept it to be honest. Um I I shared the homophobic comment on my Twitter just just to like shake my head at it in a way and a lot more people were more upset about it than I was and I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing that I'm not very bothered. I think in a way it's sad how um, we come to just expect that at some point but at the end of the day 
I'm happier than they are. So I'm just going to let them get on with it. Now, recently in the United States, you mentioned the openness of gay and the LGBT community. There's been a dust up with new law in North Carolina saying that people who identify as female can't use the women's restroom if they are male. How do you feel about that? Do you feel they should be able to? Do you think it matters if they haven't gone all the way through a sex change operation, what restroom they use, etc.? I don't think it matters. I think people should be free to use the bathroom that they want. Um, it makes me really sad to think in a way, for me, it's a. It, I feel like they're going a step backwards. I feel as though for America last year, for um, to make gay marriage legal was a massive, massive step. It was something that we celebrated, and I feel as though in 2016 to then hear that they brought this law in in North Carolina really takes us back a step. I feel like we've moved forward and then we've moved back again, and I feel as though we shouldn't be suppressing people in that way. And um, since then, it was March the 23rd, I believe, that this law was brought in. And since then, there have been um, it has been found that transgender people have been making more calls to suicide helplines since then, which is really sad to think that because it may just sound like one law but that law directly impacts people's lives every single day um and i think for everybody else we take it for granted when we go to the bathroom we can just go about a day if we need to go to the bathroom we just go but for these people they have to plan the whole day around it they're conscious about how much they drink in the morning what they eat in the morning if they have to stay at work late if they have to go to if they want to go to a college class and stay later um then they feel as though they can't and that really impacts people's lives because they're going to be become more withdrawn they can't socialize as much and i just think it's a massive step back i'm really sad about it i do agree in some ways it's a step back but the other side of the coin is they're worried about a guy who isn't necessarily identify as female going into a women's restroom with small female children or with bad intentions and something coming of that what do you yeah. think about that side of the coin well i un i understand that side of the coin i can understand where people are coming from so i think it's something that a lot of thought needs to be put into obviously i think um we should i just I, it's a tr it's a difficult one because obviously mothers and fathers rightly are going to be concerned about their children in bathrooms but i just think something needs to be changed because it's a very um broad brush to brush people with to say that you know something bad might happen because whilst i do understand that essentially any man could burst into a bathroom and do some for both intentions whether it's a bathroom for males and females or just males or just females i see your point now i'm going to relate an experience i don't know that i've ever shared with anyone outside my immediate family i was at an apple store and had to use the restroom they had two restrooms they were labeled restrooms restroom one and restroom two. There was no gender identity. Now, both were single stall restrooms. As you go in, you lock the door, you're alone. Yeah. I did look in both. They were absolutely identical. Both of them had a toilet, a urinal, and a changing table. Yeah. Now, there are such restrooms in most public places. They're essentially family restrooms, handicap restrooms. Some people in North Carolina are saying, well, if you're trans and you're really a guy and you identify as a female, why don't you just use that restroom versus trying to go into one that specifically has a gender identity? What do you think about people that say that, you know, go use this other restroom. It's still a restroom. You can still do what you need, but you're alone in that restroom. I feel as though I think that makes it them feel more secluded if they have to visibly go to another bathroom than everybody else has to go to. Um, I think if they just, I mean, it sounds easier than it's done, but if they literally just changed every public bathroom to a single stall toilet, I think it would solve a lot of problems. But I understand a lot of people aren't going to want to do that because it will cost a lot of money to convert. But I find it interesting, especially in the UK, and I don't know how it is in the US. But I find it interesting that in my lifetime in the UK, I have never seen um, a bathroom for either, um, for any gender to use. I've only ever seen bathrooms for males and bathrooms for females. I've never seen a bathroom like, like you said, bathroom one or bathroom two. But I find it interesting that we can't do that. And yet at our public swimming pools, males and females and children all get 
can get changed in the same room. Now that's interesting. I didn't know that. Mm. So at the swimming pool, you can all change in the same room, but you can't all use the same restroom. Yeah. So if you go to a restaurant in the UK, you'll have males and females. If you go into a shopping centre, anywhere where there's public bathrooms, schools, universities, colleges, supermarkets, Anyway, you have males and females, but over the last, I don't know, um, five, six, seven years, I, I can remember being quite young, but old enough to understand when they started converting. I remember my grandparents used to take me swimming and I remember it was a brand new built swimming pool and um, they took us there. And normally we would split up, so um, me and my brother would go with my granddad, my nan would go alone. And at this point, we all went together, and every everybody gets changed in the same in the same room. The toilets are for anybody to use, um, the cubicles are for anyone to use, and all men and women just get changed in one room. So I feel it's really bizarre for me to have these rooms where men women children all get changed in one in the same room but yet there's separate bathrooms for genders everywhere else i feel it's really strange to have that like that some people will say that the reason that's okay is because at that point the parent is with the child versus send if the father sends their eight-year-old daughter into a women's restroom mm -hmm. and then sees a guy follow her in yeah it might make him nervous and i can i can see his point but I can also see yours. I'm I can totally see, I, confused by the issue. I can see both. And I, I, I can completely see both. I don't think we should just, that's it, let's completely change all bathrooms for both genders. Because obviously for the issues that we have mentioned. Um, but at the same time, I think it's something that we need to have a serious think about. Because these people, um, transgender people are really struggling with it. And I think it's very unfair for, um, I feel it's unfair for them. And I was watching, there's a television show in the UK and I was watching it the other day and, um, oh no, it wasn't a television show. I was watching a TED talk actually. And it was talking about how children from the ages four who identify as transgender, um, even they had started worrying at the age of four about going to the bathroom. And I think that's so sad that at the age of four, instead of just going to school and enjoying it like everybody else, every single day becomes a worry for them about when they go to the bathroom. I have to admit, I never thought about put myself in the shoes of a trans person worrying about the restroom. Yeah, I feel like if that's something, when you if we wake up in the morning and we just drink what we want, if someone asks us to stay at work for another hour, if we'd like to go to some club after school for an extra hour, we just do it. But for people who might want to really just get home to go into the bathroom, they're going to turn down those after-school clubs. They're going to panic about a work meeting that just comes up. I feel like it's something that would really play on your mind from the minute you wake up every day. Personally, I think all public places should have to have, like I said, the family restroom type setup where anybody yeah. can go in. And then a men's and women's rooms. And they're yeah. usually all in the same location, so it's not like, okay... If you're going to the family bathroom, you're going down the hall to the right. If you're going to the men's or women's room, you're going down the hall on the left. Usually all three doors are within feet of each, a few feet or a few meters of each other. So it's not real obvious. And I know often I go in the family restroom just so I can have that extra moment of privacy or that extra, I need to get away from everybody for a few minutes. Yeah, it's interesting. I don't think, I don't know if we have family restrooms, we have male male restrooms female restrooms and we have um we have well we have restrooms for disabled people for wheelchairs and then i guess they're for families because they'll also have like a changing place for babies if they want to change and things so yeah i just think you know it's one of those things it's a double-edged sword there yeah. could be a lot of good that came comes out of anyone being able to use any restroom but there could also be some negative i think if you go into a stall and close and lock the door that's one thing but some of the companies here, Target most notably, are starting to install urinals mm. in the women's restrooms. On the wall, open, so you can see anybody that's using them and see what's going on. Okay. And I know a lot of people are going, no, if you're going to do that, put it in a stall. Yeah, I complete, I agree with that. I mean, I've been in a few men's restrooms to clean them for jobs or various other reasons. 
And it does seem like an awfully public thing, for lack of a term. They're usually just five or six urinals lined up along the wall. I never, ever use urinals. <laughs> and I think it would be, if you're going to put a urinal in a mm. women's restroom for that person who identifies as female, but is still biologically male, mm. because for whatever reason they don't want to go through the surgery, they haven't, I think you need to put it in a stall, just so that that parent who doesn't want their seven or eight-year-old daughter to see a guy standing peeing in the women's restroom, they don't have to see it. Yeah, and not only that, I think it would benefit um, that person as well, because then they can have their privacy, then they don't have children staring at them or parents edging around them. I think that would benefit everybody to have stores in that way so i completely agree there like i said i can see pros and cons to both sides all right <laughs> we have about four minutes left is there any topic you wanted to touch on we haven't gotten to um not that i can think of unless there's anything else you'd like to know <laughs> are you are you happy the way things are working out for you uh do you see yourself starting up a new relationship do you go on casual dates and for the record, when it comes to public displays of affection, I don't care what gender you are, whether you're with a guy, a girl, whatever, I think there's reasonable public displays of affection, holding hands, kiss on the cheek, sure. Making out to the on a park bench to the point where clothing is being moved around, that I think, in my opinion, that's taking it too far. Well, I definitely agree with that one. <laughs> I definitely agree with that one. Um, but no, right now, there's no relationship and there's no dating. Um, I only got about a month or so left at university and I want to get my book out to agents in June and because I know I've got deadlines coming up for university I'm trying to get videos filmed as well so at the minute I'm really just focusing on my work which is really nice actually I feel very happy with myself um, I've really enjoyed my time at university. I'm really looking forward to my second year and I'm enjoying my work at the minute. I think it's awesome that you you realized that when you were 15, you started your writing career. You pushed yourself so deep into it, you almost gave up the fun of 15, for, of age 15, for lack of a term, that you are taking the time to experience university. Now, I have, admittedly, I have stalked your social media feeds. I have seen you do go out with groups to do different activities and things like that yeah oh i do we um we do quite a lot we have race nights on tuesdays and student nights on thursdays and last weekend i was at a birthday party and i feel as though i feel as though i'm in a nice place because i feel as though because i i admit i did push myself a lot when i was younger and I think because I showed people I was very serious about it, I'm very lucky in the fact that I feel as though it's not something I'd ever take for granted, but I feel as though people know that I do continue to write and I do continue to work and people are patient in waiting for me. And um, that's really nice. I feel, as though I've, I feel as though I've earned people's trust, which is a nice place to be. Well, that's good. That's really good. So what what's your working title? I know the title could change for this manuscript you're hoping to query in June. Um, it's one of those books where normally a title comes to me straight away with an idea, or sometimes I'll get a title, and I'm really drawn to titles. I don't know why, but I'm really, really drawn to titles, and sometimes I'll have a title and I'll have to try to find a story for the title. Um, which is an interesting concept. But on this one, I do not have a title at all. And I think that is because I literally wrote this book just for me. I never intended for it to go out to agents, critique partners, never planned for it to be a marketable thing. So I think that's why it doesn't have a title. So at the minute it goes goes on the code name um, The Fashionable Book because it includes a lot of fashion in it. So that's its working title at the minute. But we are yet to come up with a title for it. <laughs> well, and obviously if you're going the traditional publishing route with this one versus self-pub, the mm. title could be changed. Anything yeah. could be changed. Anything could be changed. To me, as long as the characters stay the way they are, I'm open to changes with it. I will say that in preparation for this, I did scroll through some agent listings and things like that. A lot of people are requesting diverse man diversity in manuscripts nowadays so i think that's a very good sign of acceptance for the lgbt community definitely and it's something that especially within not only the i think i'm in quite a good place because i'm interested in the lgbt community but on the same token interested in um the book 
community, especially um, UKYA, which is, you know, young adult novels in the UK. And at the minute, we're really working hard for diverse novels um, to be more mainstream, I guess is the right word to say. And I feel as though I'm at a place where I feel comfortable enough with being out as the person I am. And I've discovered the type of writing I want to do. So I feel as though it's, I feel as though it's all worked out at the right time. And I've definitely, as I've become older, I've discovered that I really like, um, when I first started self-publishing, it was very fantasy based. And now I feel as though now that I'm older and I know more about myself and I, I've understood more about myself as a person, I'm much more interested in writing contemporary now because I really enjoy exploring personalities and people's characteristics and their background. So I feel as though um, the last few years, obviously I've been like growing up. I really feel as though I've grown up, if that makes sense. I feel like I've realized a lot. Yeah, it does make a lot of sense. All right. Do you have a website where people can find find more information about you? How would people go about finding your information and yes i will post links at the end of the video yeah um my blog is joshbaldwin.org i try to post every wednesday but blog posts have been a bit sparse lately because i've just been really really busy with other writing and university writing my youtube is youtube.com forward slash um josh b vlogs and twitter i'm always on twitter i kind of live on there is um at josh b underscore xx <laughs> Twitter is actually how I found you, so... Yeah, a lot of people have found my Twitter, so... I really I really enjoy Twitter, too. I've connected with a lot of people on Twitter, and I feel it's just a really nice way of... Um, I feel you can make a change with Twitter. I feel like you can have your idle chit-chat, but I feel as though even from every Friday um, in the UK, YA world, we have a chat every Friday, and we usually get it trending... Um, this year in January, I took part in a UKYA day, which I think with the impressions, we reached 1.7 million people. That's amazing. So, yeah. And for an hour of that day, I hosted the LGBT hour and just the amount of people. And it was all done through Twitter. And I feel like the amount of people you can reach through Twitter is something that um, I think it's something that's really powerful and I feel it's quite easy to say oh yeah people spend a lot of time on Twitter they waste a lot of time but the things you can do with it and the people you can reach yeah I think I think I feel as though Twitter is changing well obviously I am on Twitter at Jesse's POV and I'd like to thank you very much for being a guest it was awesome having you. I've really enjoyed it. The time's flown by. <laughs> yeah, it seems like we just started. Yeah, so thank you so much for having me. You're quite welcome. And good luck with the podcast. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Josh, for being my awesome guest today. All right. This is Jesse. If you have an opposing POV or a, some other topic you'd like to discuss, reach out. I am very supportive of the First Amendment, even if you don't live in this country. I will probably agree to have you on. You have to be coherent, and I don't allow name-calling. Anybody's welcome. You can reach me by going to jessiespov.com. You can catch me on Twitter at jessiespov. You can also shoot me an email at jessiespov at k98talk.org. All right. I will say, if you're really out there in left field, like proposing we blow up the planet because all mankind is evil, we're probably going to disagree significantly, and I'll probably just give you a short segment, but I will let you speak your mind. I probably won't agree with that, but... You never know, you might convince me. All right. Remember, end every day on a good note. Take care, and I'm out of here. 
All right, folks, this is Rick Robinson with you. I want to tell you about some friends of mine from a company called Security Enforcement Specialists. When I ran my security agency for 12 years, I worked with one of these partners on a daily basis. He's been involved in this agency now, and with his other partner, they do have over 30 years of experience in the private security industry. If you own a business and you need someone to keep you or your customers or residents safe, then I highly recommend contacting Security Enforcement Specialists today. Give them a call at 405-703-1796. Again, that's 405-703-1796. Again, tell them Rick from K9A Talk sent you. Like I said, if you need the help, they are here for you. So make sure that you uh, go look them up, check them out, and see what they can do. Wrong way! We're 